All right, welcome back. I am so excited to get back to building. Um, I know it's been a really, really long time since my last video. I've had a, uh, number one, you'll see it's a different different place. Uh, so a lot of exciting things that have happened. Um, yeah, some really, really fun stuff that's been going on. Um, but I am really happy to get back to building. Um, it's kind of summed up over the last couple of months here. Um, I think I mentioned in the previous video, but we moved. Um, the previous house is now rented out. Um, so that's why I have a brand new garage here. So I'll quickly jump into a little garage tour for you. Um, but over the last couple of months, I've been kind of working away at the inside of the house. It's a 60s home. Um, and it was kind of like one, I'm not sure, don't want to get super real estate-y on people and this is not a real estate channel. Uh, but if any of you watch any of like Meet Kevin's old videos or are into um, real estate investing, there's a term that's thrown around at least by Meet Kevin uh, called a, a wedge deal. And that's kind of like what this house was. Um, it's a 60s home. It's changed hands a lot and it had just enough ugliness to keep a lot of the prospective buyers out but it wasn't quite ugly enough uh, for a full-on investor to come through and do a full gut remodel um, but anyways a lot of little projects um, to get things squared away so i was kind of working at the last two months working at the master bedroom bathroom area i'll probably throw a couple of pictures somewhere on the screen here um, but yeah basically added a little section of the wall Redid the shower, um, added some storage, redid the vanity, did tile flooring, um, a lot of a lot of work on the inside of the home. Um, had a whole plumber team come out and replace our sewer line out front. Um, we had Orangeburg sewer, uh, Orangeburg pipe from the house to the street, um, so that had to be ripped up, changed out. Um, so anyways, a lot of a lot of people moving in and out of the house, a lot of activity. Um, so we're gonna get back to building here, uh, but I wanted to real quickly show you a really quick garage tour. I don't know if I ever did that at the last house, uh, but I feel like I've got a good idea of how I like to work and uh, I like to get input from anyone else out there if anyone else does things differently. Uh, but real quickly, kind of showing you around the garage, nothing too crazy. Uh, but you'll notice I did install the same lights that I had previously in the last one. These I think are Barina lights on Amazon and they are amazing. They're really cheap as well and uh, they don't use too much power since they're LED. Um, so that's the lighting. I yeah. So like I said, installed the same lighting there. I still need to get a drop down hose reel here, or not hose reel, um, uh, extension cord reel there, just to keep this up and off the floor. It is bigger than the last one, um, quite a bit bigger. The last one, the truck wouldn't even fit inside of with nothing. Um, it wasn't even long enough for our six foot six box bed, extended cab truck. Like it was a tiny garage. This is much much bigger, much more room to work in. Um, and I think it's a really neat garage that it's nighttime now so you can't see but it's cool to have lighting that comes through um, and excited to get working in here um, so kind of summed up my big big items are over here that way I can scoot them out into the driveway as needed air compressor may get kind of annoying having that cord around the ground so I may end up putting a, uh, a line up and across and a, I don't know maybe possibly we'll do that in the future but I wanted it to be easily accessible um, to the outside and I have an outlet there already so I didn't have to worry about having to run new electrical over here um, and then the water of course so I can scoot that out in the driveway but I'm not using that to build an airplane um, but anyways those are parked there then over here is really all the stuff used for working but you'll notice it's a really nice and open area for working on things yeah so that shop cart there holds all of the uh, various airplane building stuff rivets up top cleat goes down bottom and various other items uh, but then tools throughout the middle of it um, shop cabinet there just kind of various chemicals and Kind of non-airplane related stuff but yeah i don't want to bore you too much but you'll notice it is a bigger garage you also notice i have a tv set up there over there which is really neat um, that tv we weren't using and uh had an old chromecast set that up and now i can watch whatever i want out here while i'm building so i can throw on plain lady build fly go uh, jason ellis any of these uh these youtube channels and i can uh have someone talking to me in my lonely nights in the garage unless amanda's out here with Alrighty. me so that's the garage Really excited to get moving forward with building. As you probably saw over there, uh, there's a couple of items on, uh, on my toolbox there. Uh, so I wanted to jump into that really quickly here. Kind of summed up, my parents came to visit uh, from, uh, from California about a week or so ago, and they brought along a couple of really cool tools and items uh, that are gonna be really fun to use going forward with the build. Um, so those of you who aren't aware, um, Papa, my grandpa, my dad's dad, um, we used to call him Papa, um, but anyways, he was a big influence on, on me with wanting to get into aviation and wanting to get into plane building. Um, alrighty, so I've tried to film this a couple of times now and I keep rambling, so I'm trying to keep things short. Um, but in regards to these tools and why I think they're so cool and, uh, and why I'm so happy that my parents were able to bring them to me, um, is they belong to Papa. Uh, Papa was NASA test pilot. 
Um, prior to that, he's a Marine Corps fighter pilot, but what he was no, most known for uh, was his, his career with lifting bodies. In this book here, my parents didn't bring this book, but this book was made by a family member uh, that went over basically his career and all the planes he flew. Most notably, uh, or most notably for me, is two planes in here, those tools built. Uh, but for some context, if you were to Google, uh, Google Papa's name, John Mankey, um, you would find basically his, his experience with the lifting body program. Um, not necessarily this, that's him meeting uh, Jacques Cousteau with flippers on. <laughs> um, but uh, that's a little humor there. But anyways, he was uh, a big a big part of the lifting body program, uh, which then turned into uh, what developed the, the space shuttle. Uh, so it was basically flying, flying hot tubs is the way he described it, or flying, uh, flying bathtubs. Um, these basically planes that should not have flown being dropped from... Dropped from way up high, under unpowered flights as well as powered flights. He was the first to go supersonic in a lifting body. Um, but it helped to basically develop the technology to what became the space shuttle. Um, so really cool program. Those of you who, who, aren't into, or who are into this stuff, YouTube, NASA lifting bodies, there's a lot of really cool content out there on uh, like the golden days of aviation in California and uh, how that paved the way for everything else. Um, anyways, really cool book on all the different really cool planes that he flew. Um, but jumping into these tools and why they're important to me is these two planes right here. Uh, these two were built in his backyard. And what I think is so unique and uh, kind of sad unique at the same time is uh, this plane here, the pit special that he built. Um, at the time, as a little kid, I had no clue what the significance of it was it or what the significance of this was. But we used to always have him put us in the seat of his plane in his garage, and we'd sit there and play with his controls. And as a little kid, it was just, oh, yeah, it was Papa's plane in the back of his garage in the middle of a, a neighborhood in Lancaster, California. It was totally normal to us at the time, but thinking back on it, how unique that was. Uh, number one, he built the plane that we were sitting in, uh, which never clicked at the time. And then uh, number two, that he built a plane in his garage. Um, and that's kind of what like really helped me when it comes to uh, to wanting to build a plane. Um, I'm sure every other builder out there gets that question of you're doing what? You're doing it where? How are you doing that in your garage? It, it becomes totally normal. And I think this is why I feel that way, that it's normal, is thinking back on it as a kid. It was just, oh yeah, he built those in his garage. Um, but it's just so so cool. Um, you won't find, or you won't find this plane. Uh, this plane here is now at a museum. I know uh, Papa had a requirement with his airplanes is that um, since he built them, he did not want anyone, anyone else to fly them. Uh, I know it would have would have really uh, really hurt him to really mess with him if if someone else was to get uh, to get hurt in one of the planes that he built. So he had a requirement that no one else uh, he would never sell his planes for anyone else to fly. Uh, was not into the idea of someone else getting hurt on something that um, that he had a hand in. Um, so this top plane here, I I believe was a my my understanding uh, was a scratch built plane uh, that him and a partner at NASA built, uh, which I know had since been scrapped. Uh, but then this plane here, uh, he was able to donate to a museum, uh, which I'd love to go visit. Because my last memory of this plane here uh, was when it was in the garage, covered in dust, um, and playing with the controls and having no clue what the heck was going on. Uh, but I'd love to go visit. It's up at uh, Pacific Coast Air Museum in Santa Rosa. Um, anyways, these tools here built these airplanes. And that's what I think is so unique. Um, and, I, and I can't wait to use these going forward. And you'll probably notice uh, going forward, you're going to see every once in a while, I'll probably dip into the old Clico bin. Um, these are all like your standard silver uh, number 40 Clicos um, and they all still work. Um, I'm not going to use these ex exclusively. I'm going to use them basically every part that I do I want to have I want to have Papa, Papa involved with. Um, I think it's really cool and I'll be able to to dive into these and uh, have a little bit of Papa in each of the parts that we build. Um, these bucking bars are actually incredibly useful and really can't wait to use them. I'm also a big geek when it comes to these. Um, there's something really cool about what a what a tool could tell you, like the story. If it could if it could talk, um, the things that it's seen, the just in the way the way things. And it, anyways, I keep rambling. Like I said earlier, it's taken me so many times to film this this part of this video because I keep rambling. But summed up, um, like these bucking bars here, they could all tell a story. Every little notch, every every little dent, every little grind mark. Um, this one here is a good example of a, uh, for the bucking bar where that there looks like that was a, a chipped piece of metal, chipped piece of metal um, on both those sides there uh, where that was probably a really hard to reach section um, and it blew out on one side and blew out on the other. Um, I'm sh it's just, if these could talk, the things that they've seen, um, these little, little indentations here from when this is probably used as a, 
used to cut into probably had a part on top of it and dipped down through and scuffed it three times or is being used as, to hold a piece of material. Anyways, all these, if all these could speak, um, they would tell so many cool stories and I cannot wait to still use these. I'm absolutely going to use them. I'm not one to um, just like put it on the wall and never touch it ever again. I want Papa to live through this plane. I want this to, uh, these, these tools to be used. Um, like this part here, I think is another unique one. I keep, I keep rambling, um, but it's a two inch hitch and every other, like if you go in the builder forums, it's so common if you're trying to find uh, a way to buck something and people will always talk about, oh, build it with this, build it with that. Like if you remember in a previous video, I, I had, um, I had an issue bucking a really uh, short tolerant or um, a tight area and turned a chisel into a bucking bar. Uh, but if this could talk, it was a two inch hitch, uh, which has used, been used extensively um, on the front face there as a bucking bar. Um, but I just think that is so cool. Um, these tools here, I won't be able to use these two just yet. I do need to get these um, cleaned out, get these restored, um, at least to a, a functioning level. Um, but this is an air drill here, uh, which actually does work. I actually tried testing each of these here. Uh, plugged into air, it will work if I give it a little bit of a, a little bit of go. Or a little bit of a kickstart, um, so that's really good to know. This here is a pneumatic, uh, I believe, a pneumatic screwdriver, uh, but it's going to need uh, going to need some cleaning. Um, but I'm going to really make sure to, to preserve uh, preserve the character of them. I don't want to get these and spray paint them back up and make them look brand new. These have uh, these have experience, and I want to retain that. Um, this rivet gun here, I think, is awesome. Um, it fully functioned. It is it is ready to go. I, um, I put on a new new fitting there. And it is ready to go. It's a, uh, a Chicago pneumatic, or a, who is this? It is a, I should have looked up ahead of time. Uh, yeah, this is a Chicago pneumatic uh, gooseneck uh, riveter, uh, which I think is going to be really, really handy with our plane build. Um, getting into tight areas where if I can't get the standard pistol grip um, riveter in, I can use this gooseneck. Um, but yeah, summed up, I'm going to quit talking here. <laughs> I keep rambling. So, it's gonna be really cool to use these. If you ever see me uh, dip into either this bucket here or start using any of these, these old tools here, that's why I'm using them. Um, it's to, to have a little bit of pop in our build. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll quit rambling about this stuff here, uh, but wanted to really go over that. Hopefully, hopefully you guys will appreciate right. it. Thanks so much for letting me ramble there about, uh, about the garage, about the cool tools, about everything. Um, we're gonna jump into getting the tail cone started. Um, we do have the wing kit on order, so I'm not sure how long I have to build this tail cone before the wings show up. Wings were originally, when I ordered them, they had an originally uh, anticipated date in, I think it was mid-December, so this month. I don't think we're gonna get them this month. I've not heard from Vans as far as like any kind of a, uh, a crating date or anything any, anything from Vans. So uh, my latest check on their, their lead times, it looks like I'm probably looking at more like February uh, for, for when I'll get the wings, uh, which will give me plenty of time to get this tail cone knocked out get a bunch of these videos cranked out um, and get to building. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Next video, we're gonna be jumping deep into the tail cone and uh, moving forward from there. Uh, so I'll see you next time. Adios.